Hey, what's up guys? My name is Michael Westbrook. As always, thanks for checking out this video. If you haven't already, do me a huge favor and hit that subscribe button. Today, I wanna to talk a little bit about creative yet super practical ways to use the foot switches and aux switches for the HX Stomp. I wanna walk you guys through my setup, how I like to have them set up, as well as several different tricks for assigning them to different things, um, some of which will save on your DSP usage. If you're having a hard time fitting everything on the HX Stomp, some of these ideas will definitely help you out. I will also say up front that I'm going to be using a couple of aux switches that the kind people at Rockstock Pedals sent me. They're not sponsoring this video, but I did get them for free. So um, I just want to let you guys know that. The good thing for you is that they also sent me two more to give away. So for the next couple of weeks, I'm going to be running a contest over on my Instagram page where you can win one of those. Be sure to check the links in the description for more info on that. But for now, let's get into it. All right, so first we're just gonna go through just a general setup and how I like to set up my foot switches. As you can see here, we have four effects. We have a compressor, the kinky boost, just a simple delay and a spring reverb. So typically what I do is if I have effects that I'm wanting to switch on and off, then I will go and I touch this and I'm going to assign that. So now the comp turns off and on here. And then I'll go to say the next one, the boost. I'll just go over and do this all on these first three foot switches. So as you can see, I think generally this is set up as a tap tempo to get to your tuner, but I've changed that. So we change that by going, we hit page and page together and then we go over, that gets us to our global settings here. We go into our global settings, we go over to foot switches, and as you can see here, I have foot switch three, I have that selected as stomp three. Foot switch four, I have as stomp four, and then foot switch five, I have as tap and tuner. So to get out of here, we can hit the home button as those are set up how we want them to now. And then, so the next one, you know, how do I assign this switch right here to my reverb? Well, we go here, we hit page and page again, and then we go to bypass assign, and then we put that one on foot switch four. So now this foot switch should turn the reverb off and on. There you go. We hit home to get out of that. And then this should act as my tap tempo and uh, get to my tuner. So I'm gonna hold that down. That should get us to our tuner. There we go. We hit it one more time, we get out of our tuner. So that's typically how I'll have this set up, um, just for a general setup, just having four foot switches that turn off and on effects and then have my uh, you know, tap tempo switch there. Five foot switches all assigned to different things. So here's one thing that we can do um, just a little differently. Say we don't have space for a, another pedal, you know, say we have amp models in there, we're running a cab or an IR, and there's just not room to add a boost and we wanna just add a clean boost. So we could go over here, say to our compressor, say this is something that we leave on all the time. This could be any effect that we wanna leave on and on all the time that has a gain control. So what I'll do, first we're gonna, we're gonna take the bypass assign, we're gonna just take that off of there so it's just always on. If we wanna switch it on and off, we can push the save button. When it's selected, that turns it off and on. So say this is our kind of our base level gain, you know, I haven't tweaked this at all, but say 6.2 is where we want our gain. But say we wanna boost, maybe we wanna boost up, you know, a little bit. So what we can do is if we hold this gain knob down, then we get this screen right here that says controller assign. So our parameter is gain. And then our controller, let's put this to foot switch one. We'll have that on latching. And then I'm gonna go over with the page button and I'm gonna do minimum value. This is our starting point. We were at 6.2, so I'm gonna put this on 6.2. And then our max volume, our max value, let's put that at 7.2, okay? So now we hit home. And now when we hit this first foot switch, we should, we should see that gain. See the gain adjust right there? So that's with it engaged, our gain is at 7.2. With it disengaged, we're at 6.2. So essentially that gives us another way to set up a boost without having to dedicate a block to it. 
So let's take this idea a step further. So I've gone to a different preset that I have. This is one I've been using a lot lately. It's two amps and two IRs. I'm using the matchless and the new Princeton model. And then I have a, a delay on here, um, analog with mod. Okay, so if I go and say I wanted to add another gain stage or something here, you know, I'm running out of DSP. There's no distortion there. You know, a lot of things are grayed out just because my DSP is being taken up by the amps and the IRs and all of that. So say we want to get some more gain stages out of this from within the HX stomp. So I've got a Timmy right here, um, the Timmy model. And I've already set this up, but basically what I've done is I've gone through the steps that we talked about with the boost and I've done it for multiple parameters. So you'll see when I hit the center button that you'll see some of these change. You'll see the gain from 1.9 to 4.5. I noticed as I bumped up the gain that I wanted a little less treble. So I made the treble change. Watch the treble cut when I hit it. We're starting at five. It goes to 4.5. So it takes a little bit of the adjust the treble a little bit there. I think with the Timmy, it's actually backwards. I don't remember. But, and then I went over a page and then the level here, you'll see it change. We go from 6.5 down to 5.2. As I turned up the gain, it naturally got louder and it was just a little bit much. So this way, essentially what we have is we can turn it on and off with this foot switch that gives, gives us that block on, and then we have a second gain stage by hitting this. So essentially we have a dual, you know, dual stage, a two gain stage of the Timmy that we can control with these two foot switches, and we didn't have to add a block. We're just adjusting parameters within that pedal to get another sound. All right, so let's take that same idea and apply it to an amp. So we can do the same kind of thing. You can see from this preset, I've got a lot going on. There's two IRs, a reverb, a delay. There's a compressor after the amp model. I'm using the match stick. There's a clon block and then a vibrato. So if we go back to the amp, I have all this stuff programmed to foot switch four right here. So you'll see I've got a lower gain setting with it on 1.5 and then I get a little bit of gain boost. Now we move over here, we see the channel volume changes as well to compensate there. And basically it gives me two different sounds. I've got a cleaner sound and then a little more overdriven sound. And then I can use, use the clon right here to give me even more. But essentially it's the same idea that we did with the Timmy on the other preset. We're just gain staging things. But rather than adding a block and taking up more DSP, or in this case there's not even DSP available, we're able to adjust the settings and use a foot switch to switch back and forth between the two. Um, it's just a way to get more sounds by not having to add blocks. And ultimately we're getting the versatility of being able to use amp gain and different amp settings and all of that. I mean, you could go super deep with this and change things for different guitars or you know, different songs or whatever, but the ability to assign all of these parameters to a foot switch can be really convenient. So we can obviously use this to change gain stages and to change volume, but we can also use it to change parameters on different effects. Here's an example of that. Say we want to have a normal kind of regular delay sound, and then maybe we want to be able to hit a foot switch to make it go into oscillation. Okay, so on this analog with modulation, we've got our feedback set at 29%. So say we want to send that into oscillation by cranking the feedback up to 100%. We wanna hold that feedback button down. We're gonna put the parameter is already on feedback because that's what we were holding down. Then we're gonna get a controller. Let's put that on foot switch four on our aux switch here. We are going to go to momentary here our minimum value, I think we are on 29. And then our max volume, we're gonna, or value, we're gonna have it 100%. So now watch the feedback. When I hit this aux four switch, it's gonna go to 100% feedback. But as soon as I let off of that, it goes back. So that could be really handy for something like this, where it's you know gonna oscillate while I hold it down and then I can just let it off. You know, another cool thing uh, we could do with that would be um, put it on a tremolo so that it bypasses the tremolo or maybe it changes the depth or I don't know. There's a lot of different, you know, cool, unique, creative ideas we could do with that. But um, adding 
adding that and then making it momentary kind of can give us that that in and out um, effect that you know we could really use for all kinds of stuff and create stutter effects or or whatever all right so we're on a new preset here and i'm kind of doing something interesting with this preset where i'm switching amps I'm running them through the same IR so it keeps them in the same ballpark, but with a switch of a foot switch, I can change between a Marshall sound and then a matchless model. So here's what that looks like. I hit there and then it turns on the matchless and this compressor. I, After playing it for a little while, I noticed that I wanted a little bit of compression on the matchless just because it was a cleaner sound. And I didn't need that when I was on the more Marshall sound. So I'm kind of doing two things here. One is that I am A, being between the amps, but then when I go to the matchless, I'm turning on that compressor. So I'm able to select multiple things to control with these. Now, one tricky thing about setting this up is that basically everything is assigned to this, right? The bypass, well, page and page, bypass assign, that's on foot switch three. On this one, it's foot switch three, and on this one, it's foot switch three. So to make sure that this one is off and these two are on, because normally they would be like this and we'd be turning all three on and off, what we can do is we can highlight the the this amp right here, the solo lead crunch, and if we just turn that off using the save button, then when we select this, we should be going back and forth here. There we go. Now you do have to remember, I have it so it's set that this is the this turns the light on for the Marshall sound because that just makes more sense to me. And then when I turn it off, this light is off. And that's my cleaner sound. So again, being able to assign multiple things to a foot switch can almost give us a MIDI type switching flexibility where we turn, you know, maybe we turn a delay and a reverb off and on at the same time, or maybe it's a, a boost and, you know, a modulation effect or something at the same time. There's a lot of different possibilities, but by combining those things, it makes it super easy. And the HX Stomp, you know, makes all of that, um, makes it easy and gives you a lot of options. That's gonna do it for this video. As always, thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions about anything that I covered in this video, be sure to leave them down in the comments. I will try to answer them the best that I can. Also, big shout out to Rockstock Pedals for sending me the aux switches. They sent me a dual switch version and a single switch version. I will be giving away one of each of those on my Instagram in a couple of weeks. So if you want more info about that or about Rockstock, be sure to check the links in the description. All right, until the next one, I'll see you out there.